today on space infrastructure and geoing strategy for Indo-Pacific a shared vision. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizer Geospatial World on completing 25 years and for choosing such a relevant topic for the year's conference. Indo-Pacific, as has been just brought out, is one of the most dynamic regions of the world and represents the center of gravity of the world's economic and strategic interests. As we are aware, maritime geography of this region creates an arterial form of shipping which concentrates around critical show points. State of Homos and Malacca Strait account for nearly 80% of the global energy flow. There are many other such uh, show points in the region including those in the South China Sea, critical for trade with China, Korea, Japan and Eastern Russia. Any disruption of these show points can adversely impact the global economy. Security in the Indo-Pacific region can be best described as fragile and is currently a major challenge. The challenges include territorial disputes, maritime and traditional terrorism, many non-traditional threats as also climate change. China's emergence as a dominant power has just been brought out poses a serious challenge to the Indo-Pacific order. The Indo uh, Indian Ocean region has approximately 71 territorial disputes encompassing land and maritime borders involving 40 sovereign nations. Many of these disputes are legacy issues that nonetheless are potential flashpoints. The effects of climate change are evident from the fact that between 2000 and 2020, global sea levels have risen by 3.6 inches and there is already a nine-fold increase in coastline flooding compared to the status in 1970. In the last few years, there has been growing strategic competition in the region and many new frameworks like the Quad, AUKUS, China-Russia partnership have been formed. Additionally, multiple trilateral and bilateral arrangements have been forged in various uh, forums and in sub-regions of the Indo-Pacific. The Indo-Pacific region has special importance to India being the main artery for its development. Currently 90% of the India's trade and its energy supplies are transported by the Indian Ocean, while about 50% of India's trade is concentrated in the Indo-Pacific region. India aspires to establish itself as a credible and a reliable partner in the region. India has been engaging with all countries of the Indo-Pacific to various forums and has been successful in projecting itself as the first respondent and maintains its role as the net security provider. Aligning with the topic of discussion today, military operations are not the same as yesterday years and space and geospatial technologies has an important role in future warfare. Interdisciplinary approach of commanders for real-time visualization of emerged situation in a three-dimensional context has brought about a fundamental shift in the doctrine of war fighting. Therefore, detailed knowledge of the area of conflict in the form of imagery intelligence has thus become core to the military operations. The imagery intelligence and geospatial data has been combined into geospatial intelligence, which is now an indispensable tool for all military operations. The information now can be collected on stationary and moving targets through electro-optical synthetic aperture radars, smart sensors, as also person on the field. Therefore, imagery intelligence, also called aiming, measurement and signatures intelligence, massing, signal intelligence, including the elite, open source intelligence and human intelligence, becomes inclusive domain of geospatial intelligence. We have all witnessed how the geospatial technologies have made the battlefield transparent in the ongoing Russian-Ukraine conflict. The large Russian military convoys amassing on the borders of Ukraine were noticed in February of 2022 by commercial satellite imagery. The use of trust ammunition by Russia and Ukraine was done using massive data. Awesome, including social media, was employed by various countries to track movements of adversary troops. Starlings 
supply Ukraine with reliable internet connectivity and communication during the war. To counter this, the electronic warfare was employed by Russian troops to jam GPS signals, satellite communication in eastern Ukraine that disrupted the navigation of Ukrainian military vehicles, drones and command and control networks. Thus, this new age war has aptly displayed the power of space assets and brought out their vulnerabilities too. As alluded earlier, China's military upsurge in the region has a destabilizing impact and has made big strides in geoing capabilities too. The rapidly growing space spectrum of China is second only to the US with over 600 operational satellites in the orbit and has ambitious target of 10,000 satellites by 2030. The mega LEO satellite constellation project Yuvang for establishing broadband internet services will have almost 13,000 satellites and is claimed to outdo Starlink program. Chinese ISA fleet is estimated to be having more than 260 satellites, again second only to the US, with impressive revisit time of around 15 minutes for the EO satellites and around 4 to 5 hours for the SAR satellites. The real coverage in the area of interest, especially the South China Sea, is near continuous. Beidou PNT satellite in the Indo-Pacific region has an accuracy of 5 meters for the commercial purpose and estimated up to 10 centimeters for military use. During the Zohai air show last year, China unveiled SLC-18 solid state state SR radar that is used for surveillance of upper atmosphere and space uh, and can search, detect and track LEO satellites and blasting missiles in all weather conditions, thus achieving robust space situation awareness. China is also assisting Pakistan by providing ISR data, establishing geodetic data, assisting in establishing space port and development of satellite manufacturing and launch capability, which is a matter of concern. India's space program has been developed with a prime focus on social and economic development of the people. Over a period of time, it has matured to a great extent with reasonable launch capabilities and vast range of satellites, including ISR and remote sensing. India's geospatial economy is expected to cross rupees 63,000 crores by 2025 at a growth rate of 12.8%. Keeping this in mind, India has reached national geospatial policy last year and Indian space policy this year thereby opening up of all the sectors to private participation. The National Geospatial Policy acknowledges the benefits of availability of high quality geospatial data in diverse sectors of the economy and has set a goal of having high resolution topographic survey and mapping with high accuracy digital elevation model by 2030. This has resulted in setting up of more than 250 geospatial startups in India. Similarly, the recently declared Indian space policy aims to create space resources and services by promoting active private sector participation in the entire value chain of space economy. As a precursor to Indian space policy, our Prime Minister had launched Mission Defence Space in October 2022 that called for private sector space companies to apply for 75 defence space challenges for indigenous development. This included the development of launch systems, satellite system, communication and payload system, ground system and software systems. These challenges are open to start startups, MCMEs and individual innovators under various department of defense production initiatives like the IDEX, Make One and Make Two. The highlight for the mission was to push to liberalize the foreign direct investment policy to allow 74% FDI under the automatic rule. These policy provide the civil sector to join and be a part of India's space and geospatial saga. In the present time, there is no gainsaying the fact that space capabilities, besides being essential for nation's development, are crucial for conduct of military operations. Some peaceful civil applications of space that are utilized 
by military including navigation, mapping, survey, exploration, weather and communication. India already has a robust civil space program and there is a need for national space strategy which would require focused civil military interaction. Our established civil space program already provides us with an excellent base for civil military fusion to our developing space control capabilities. To make better and efficient utilization of space in military operations, we have made many institutional changes like operationalization of Defense Space Agency in September of 2019, which a tri-service organization responsible for planning, coordination, and execution of all military space activities. Similarly, the Defense Space Agency is now working on formulation of defense space doctrine and creation of a viable space infrastructure for the military use. Geospatial technology cannot alone answer all the questions that call for additional knowledge of multiple geographic entities and their relationships. What is needed is information in real time along with analysis of the affected areas and, res and respect to, with respect to the characteristic peculiarities and fusion of discrete pieces of intelligence on a common platform in chronological order for the respondent to visualize the operating environment. The entire world is documented, catalogued and analyzed. However, there, is, there are still some details that cannot be mapped due to manual and time intensive work. Therefore, next generation geoint application need to focus on machine learning and artificial intelligence. Also, standardization of GIS that can be used by all players and countries is the way ahead. The technology can equip us with near real-time imaging and high-band data communication. New, new sensor technologies continue to improve spatial data collection and provide the capability to turn around information more quickly. Space and geospatial technology, including GIS, are going to make a significant impact in the ways countries tackle some of the major humanitarian and sustainable problems. A modernized and evolved national policy and geospatial ecosystem cannot be developed only with innovations and advancement in technology. It has to be based more on the individual priorities of the stakeholders, including the nations, and how it can impact the lives and the livelihood of common citizens. The world has advanced from a traditional definition of geospatial information and its application to a more dynamic definition of geospatial solution of real life problems using modern technologies like the digital twins and metaverses and have come a long way from delay of using days of using paper maps for finding places to adopt spatial intelligence in everyday decisions. Public and private stakeholders are viewing geospatial information as a backbone of sustainable development mechanism from the bottom up to establish quality geospatial ecosystem. The government, industry, researchers, academia and civil society need to come together and align their activities to build key solutions. The space infrastructure and geospatial technologies can be leveraged in the Indo-Pacific for collaboration in satellite communication, remote sensing, environment monitoring, disaster management, climate change mitigation and resource management. It is important for countries in the Indo-Pacific to collaborate, share data and develop regional framework to maximize the benefits of space infrastructure and geospatial technologies. Cooperation in areas such as data sharing and capacity building can help harness the full potential of these technologies for the region's social economic development and security.